That'd be the easiest shot of goal if the ball spilled out, but he held in for the stoppage. Doesn't matter though, because gone to Jones. Oh, holy shit! From outside 50, the spiral. Jack Fighting has hit absolute cover off that. One step, turn around, and boo to the 10 rows back with a spiral. What the shit? You can't do that, Fighting! G'day, guys. My name's Josh. Yo, can't call me Zawoodle, and welcome back to AFL Evolution once again, where we are continuing on with the AFL 2018 Finals predictions. Now, the last one, I got a bunch of them wrong. My half the predictions I made did not come to fruition, and most importantly, my beloved Hawkers didn't get over the top of the dreaded Richmond Tigers. The Dicks. Fuck Richmond. God's ever. Anyway, that's okay. I didn't really think we had it. I mean, we never looked like we had it. When Sean Burgoyne and Lukey Brewist miss easy goals and 10 meters out, you know you're in a bad spot. You know you're not going to get over the top of the reigning premiers. But after that, we had the double chance. So we go through and we play the winner of the uh, of the Hawthorne, uh, not the Hawthorne, the Melbourne Geelong match, which was Melbourne. So it is going to be an all Melbourne affair at the MCG. It's going to be a fucking good game. I'm very excited. I'm a little nervous. It's kind of like one of those win-win situations. Like if Melbourne win, I'm not too upset. I reckon Melbourne probably have the Tigers on their best day. Uh, but Hawthorne, my lads, I'd love to see them get through, but I'm not sure. I mean, you know, once bitten, twice gay kind of thing. We might actually take Richmond the second time around, but uh, I, I wouldn't be upset if I saw Melbourne get through and win the chocolates. Just like last time, I'm going to make it all match up just as, like, as close as I can to what it's actually going to be. The MCG, it's a night game, Friday night footy. It's going to be 22 degrees through the day and sunny, so clear conditions for the footy that night. Now I actually have the weather reports for what the game is going to be. I'm like, last time it was complete guesswork. This time I actually know what the weather's going to be. So, MCG, night time, prime time footy, legendary computer difficulty, even though they're playing each other, but that definitely makes a difference, I think, in what kind of game it turns out to be. Just like last time, I'm not going to play. I'm just going to sit and watch and commentate and see what the genius AI, it's terrible AI, of AF Evolution thinks is going to happen Friday night. Oh, wow. Look at James Sisley's face. He looks like someone has put something where something shouldn't be, somewhere where the sun does not shine. He does not look happy at all. But there is the team. Cyril Rioli is, of course, sitting out because he is retired, even though we'd love to have big Cyril out there tearing it up with his 12 disposals, but somehow 20 scoring involvements. There are the lads. It's going to be a good day to be or either one of the teams. I have to quickly go in because I accidentally made it so that I was playing as a team, and I don't want that. There we go. All right. I am impartial. I am a computer. No one mind me. How do you beat Maxi Gorn though? Maxi Gorn is the dominant ruckman of the comp. You can't. Gets the tap down straight away and then gets his own crumb and a big boy back before he rides him straight into the deck. Oh, it's already a hot footing in there. No one's got clean possession. Soccer off the ground forward. Melbourne looking more dangerous immediately. Oh, geez, that's good. Well done, Burge, for holding the ball in. That would been the easiest shot of goal if the ball spilled out, but he held it in for the stoppage. Doesn't matter, though, because gone to Jones. Oh, holy shit. From outside 50, the spiral. Jack Fighting has hit absolute cover off that. One step, turn around, and boo to the 10 rows back with a spiral. What the shit? You can't do that, Viney! Hawthorne looking to respond. Poppy's going to put it up the wing to Bruce. He's a long way from home, though. Apparently, it doesn't matter, though. If he's, a, if he's a long way out, maybe he's better at scoring goals, seeing as he can't kick it from 20 meters out. Timmy go back to Poppy. Oh, give it to Bruce. He's open. Nup ignores Bruce running into an acre of space and kicks it backwards and probably going to turn it over. That's uh, some interesting AI there. We, we all love AF Evolution AI because it's definitely smart and not programmed by a toddler who's never seen a line of code in his life. Oh, no, here we go. Hawthorne going forward. Big Mac. Mac boy turns it over. And Melbourne escape again. Here's Jack Viney on the wing. Gets it smothered this time. Kits goal from there last time. He's loaded up a seven meter bomb again. Put it on Jesse Hogan's head. Probably won't actually be playing in the game because he's sitting out for a little while now. That's right, because he's going to come in, kick the sausage, and Melbourne are kicking away to a nice healthy lead, and Hawthorne could do nothing to stop it. Oh, Tommy Mitchell, the future Brownlow medalist. He's, got, he's tearing up in the middle. Ma Maxi Gorn will be getting all of the hitouts, but Tommy Mitchell's good enough to read it off someone else's hand and get his hand on the pill either way. There we go. Hawthorne have finally responded. Timmy Owens kicked a nice sausage from 45 out directly in front. The big rang is on the scoreboard. That makes it look a little bit more healthy for Hawthorne's sake. They were looking pretty bad, and Maxi Gorn wins another hit out, but Big Mac crumbs it himself. Oh, Maxi Gorn going forward. Maxi Gorn. The spiral from 60. You can't stop, Maxi. The big bid saw the easy footy, and he just went numb. 
and kicked a sausage. That's a good effort by the big man. Oh, Nathan Jones has been injured. Nathan Jones injured 30 minutes in the first quarter. That's big. That's big if you're demons because Nathan Jones is like the, the heart and soul of your club at this point. There's graffiti of him celebrating kicking the first goal and a half uh, on the in alleyways everywhere around Melbourne right now from the last game because Melbourne couldn't kick straight to save their goddamn lives. But while I was talking about Nathan Jones getting his bald head caved in like accidentally by someone I'm sure, Hawthorne to kick another goal and it's back to one straight kick between them. Maxi going with another tap. Jager with a good read. Oh, well, I can't tell what's with the ball. Oh, there we go. It comes a big boy, and it's gone back Hawthorne's way. This is looking good. This is looking good. Tony Mitchell got the ball, gave it off. Somehow, spiral from 50 through the guts again. German Impies kicking a sausage. They just don't miss these days. Luke Bruce has taken the mark. 45 out on a 45 degree angle. He's going to go for home. Doesn't even think twice about it, and puts it straight through the middle. Where was that last week, Bruce? Just shanked it out of the like, from 20 meters out and missed a gimme. You didn't miss for like two years, then you can't kick an easy one. But he's kicked that one, and Hawthorne for the first time in the match have a lead. Ruffy elects to bump, doesn't get make clean contact, and turns the ball over. And Melbourne are going to come in and respond immediately, except big Blakey Hardwick says no and takes the intercept mark and stops them in their tracks. Oh, that's too easy. That's too easy. Cameron Pedersen, easy mark, 30 out directly in front. They don't miss these. They don't miss the 80 meter barrels. They're not going to miss the 40 meter drop punts. This computer is insane at its goal kicking, terrible at its decision making. But either way, that ties it all up again at four goals apiece straight. And it's got to, it's, this is going to go down to the wire uh, again. Burgoyne makes a smother and Maxi Gore doesn't get the kick away. Had it smothered off to Brut or tackled as he tried to kick. Oh, and, and Melbourne trying to run it out. That's ambitious. All rough. He got it from Gunston, didn't get a chance to turn and shoot. A juke and gets it out. And Jake Lever takes the easy mark in the back line. They're going to handball and run it through the center of the ground. Coast to coast. Pedersen from 50. Probably going to have a look at it. Alex not to passes it off to Mitch Hannon, who was in a much better position and should probably go back and kick the goal. That was rough and tumble, scrappy footing in Hawthorne's forward line. That's poor. That's poor by Hannon. Turn it over to Brand. You don't do the lateral in your forward 50 unless you're sure of it. You turn the pill over, but then Jordan Lewis is going to come back and hurt his former side. It's turned over a plenty right now. All Hawthorne needs is just a steady hand and some decent kicking, but they can't fucking do anything right now. Now oh, there we go. No, that's Turnover. Who'd have guessed? Ruffy has it in the center. Last play of the quarter. Finds Gunston. Sara now would be okay. Gives it off to O'Brien in the pocket. Didn't even attempt to play the footy. Just let his man take the mark in front of him. Didn't even look like he wanted to contest it. There is the siren as Langford takes the mark. Langford's going to be playing. Langford takes the mark on the wing. And at quarter time, it is all square. Four goals in pace. 24. Ball's been bounced to start the second term. And oh, big boy McAvoy got hands to it before Maxi gone. That is unheard of. It's a rough footy going forward. Just slapping it around. Good tackle by Jarman Impey. Gives it to McAvoy, who unloads around the corner from 70. But it's marked in the goal square by Tom McDonald. And they're going to release out to the, the near side coming down the wing. That was uh, that's, uh, that's pretty lucky. McAvoy didn't deserve the score there. But at the same time, it was unlucky not to. 450 entry for Melbourne. Finds Petrarca on the nipples without any contestants around him. Oh, that's, that's ambitious. Jeff Gartley in no better position than Petrarca just was. But Petrarca didn't want the responsibility, which is absolutely not what Christian Petrarca would do. He would slot that for his team because he's a fucking gun. Gartley, on the other hand, has popped it through. They get the first goal of the second quarter and they lead by just that much. Well, uh, oh my goodness. McAvoy is getting the taps before Gorn left, right, and center. Gorn may be injured. Must be carrying something. Ball spills to Titchell. Gets drilled by Big Maxi Gorn. So Maxi is probably going to get rubbed out for the grand final. That did not take his weight and height advantage over Titchell before rubbing into the dirt. If he was Big Nick Nat, he'd be rubbed out for a game easily. But after that, Big Boy McAvoy has the mark, has the shot on goal, and has kicked the goal to get, square it all up again with Melbourne. This is just, it's just a shootout out here. It's just whoever misses first loses. Jack Gunston has the mark. 45 out, 45 degree angle. Bread and butter stuff for Jackie Boy Gunston. Man can kick a snag from anywhere. Sets it up. Oh, didn't, no one got a hand on it. It was spoiled nicely from the back. And more oh, Maxi Gorn's come all the way to the forward line. Turned it over to Timmy O. And Timmy O has turned around. And boo, nah, nah, it through for a nice snaggeroonie for the redhead. Well done to him. He's kicked two. Hawthorne lead by a goal. This is, this, this is tip for tap. Coast to coast, like you score, I score, everything's going wrong. Bernie Vince paid for, uh, pinned for throwing the ball, and Hawthorne looks to go forward again. Timmy O is just tearing it apart in the forward 50. He's lining up for his third goal directly in front. He's gone the spiral and he's missed. 
I said the first one to miss is going to lose, and there you have it. The first miss goes to Hawthorne. Timmy O, despite setting everything on fire, and for a change, not with his hair color. Oh, 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 there is the first AFL Evolution mistake. That is some horseshit AI. Got to give Hawthorne a chance for redemption. The Buna now from the pocket. Strato does not miss, and that is a seven point play with some utter horseshit. Oh, man, they just announced AFL Evolution 2. They've just announced that there's a second version of this game coming out next year. And I hope to God it is not as much of a broken piece of shit as this awful excuse for a game is. This game is terrible. The AI is terrible. And I really hope they just don't reskin this shit and put it out again. Because that's going to be a waste of my money. But in the meantime, let me talk about how shit this game is. This game is putting Hawthorne forward. They're going to have a set shot on goal once again. Is this Timmy O again? He looks like Timmy O. He's learned his lesson. He's put it out to the left and slotted his third. Oh, the man cannot be stopped. Melbourne are finally going to respond. They're going forward through Dartlett. Hawthorne kicked four unanswered goals out of behind. So they are leading by 19 points. Now to be 13 points. But Dartlett has made no mistake there. Melbourne's still kicking straight, which is the complete opposite thing to what Melbourne do. They normally spray it all over the shop and kick like five goals 20 because it's just for some reason their goal kicking just lets him down with the clutch times i don't know if, if i tell you what, if joel selwood didn't give away that shitty free kick on the wing by the way watching joel selwood give away that free kicking top cost tom hawkins almost a certain goal i have never been happier as someone who hates strong God, that made me a happy boy. Anyway, if, they, if, they had, uh, if that hadn't happened, Geelong probably had Melbourne in that game because Melbourne just could not convert. But in the meantime, Hawthorne are trying to get out of the back 50, yet given an easy free kick from Colliver. Clayton Oliver, who one of my favorite players, is given it away, and Hawthorne get an easy release through Sean Burgoyne. Board 50 entry for Melbourne finds Gartland. Gartland is tearing it up up there. Who is playing? Is that Hardwick? I can't tell because he doesn't have his actual, uh, he doesn't have his mullet on. It looks like number 15. So Gartland's kicked his third sausage. Him and Timmy O were going toe to toe. Gartland has responded twice to Timmy's dominance up forward. That's another, that's uh, rough head in the ruck. Max Gordon must be off. Oh, there we go. Isaac Smith handballs through. Titchell gets it back and he puts it out to the wing and it's intercepted again. So many interceptions. You just can't stop him. When the game decides that it wants to swing, uh, swings the roundabouts, you cannot do anything to stop that shit. Half time, Hawthorne have been cut back to a seven point lead. It was a good response from the Demons. Timmy O, three goals. Gartlett, three goals. And Kieran Brand, uh, sorry, Kieran Brand, Caden Brand with the game high posses of 10. Titchell, nowhere to be seen, being held quiet, probably by Viney. But it is the second half, start of the third term. Hawthorne needs something, or Melbourne needs, the both teams need something. They need someone to stand or authority on the game. Hawthorne tried, didn't quite make it happen, and they come forward through McAvoy, who turns it over immediately. Oh, that was looking good too. That was a good goal score opportunity, but Big Boy McAvoy just could not hit the target. And now, ooh, ooh, oh, good spoil. Good spoil there by Titchell. Rose well, and Poppy looks for Timmy O. Can't find him again, though. Timmy O, it's like Buddy Frank on the Sydney Swans. No one's looking for anyone other than Timmy O. You need to have a multi pronged attack. Luke Bruce has it. He's going to have to kick from the 50. Doesn't like it. Passes it off to Timmy O. And Lever takes the easy chest mark behind. The ball travels through Timmy O's chest, straight into the breadbasket behind. But Timmy O gets it back, snaps around the corner. Oh, Timmy O's picking up goals left, right, and center. You don't even know where he's going to get it from. Doesn't matter if he's dropping the easy marks. Doesn't matter if the game's fucking him a little bit with its AI. Timmy O turns around, slaps around his body, and kicks his fourth for the game. He is on fire. Hawthorne's starting to look dangerous. Going forward again. He's, oh, jeez. I mean, you, you got to wonder, don't you? How do you? If you get in front like that, how do you not take the easy mark? So Jenna can look for an outlet. But Hawthorne looking much more dangerous than Melbourne right now. They're looking and going forward and looking and playing well. And the interceptions are starting to rack up. And there's more of them against Melbourne than there is against Hawthorne. Oh, never mind. There's <laughs> Once it evened up a little bit. Timmy O again. Timmy O again. Takes an easy chest mark out in front. No opposition player near him. And he goes back. Gets the Bruna and are going. Doesn't make the distance though. Should have gone back and gone the drop punt. Questionable decision. Hold the ball up wide. Surely spills to Gunston. Advantage wasn't called but would have been. And Gunny kicks his first goal of the match. He's been playing well up forward. But he finally hits the scoreboard rather than just getting an assist. Well done by Hawthorne. They lead by 19. It's starting to blow a little bit. And another high free kick given away. And Hawthorne go forward again. Except Bergon dropped the mark. Slick handball out there though. And it's turned over back to... Oh, no, never mind. It's come back. And Timmy O from 50. Once again, the spiral is missed. 
Oh, he is just he is just loading up and going for goal anytime he sees the Sharon. Forward again for Hawthorne. Liam Shields loads up and puts it straight through the guts. Another goal to Hawthorne. Melbourne just have no answer to this. They've run out of legs. Hawthorne is scoring at will. And uh, barring a couple of fantastic efforts from individual players, Melbourne just cannot get back up there. This is not how I thought the game was going to go at all, but that's how AFL Wilson says it's going to go. So it's the closest I'm going to get to a premiership this year. But there we go. Bernie Vince is uh, looking at going forward again. Maxi gone with the easy mark. He's got to hit a forward target. They've got to go. They've got to stop kicking around the back line. Clayton Oliver dropped the mark and they're going to, to bring it away again through Sicily who's turned it over immediately just as I was talking him up. And Clayton Oliver who was dead on the ground gets another posse and Melbourne just kicked it backwards. What are you kicking it backwards for? I know it's Nate Jones and you saw the reflection off his shiny head and thought I have to kick it there but you've got to look at going forward but Jones hits the nipples of Pedersen who will hopefully restore some faith in the Melbourne faithful and kick a sausage with which he does not. That's an early call from me. I've gone to Bruce back if I trying to call the result halfway through the kick. But he's hit the post. A bit of woodwork action. Oh, and Hawthorne have played on. Fortunately, he turned it over. Oh, lucky, lucky. Grant Birchall in a paddock. Gave him an out. Centering ball for Melbourne. Good punch in the back from, I think that was Stratton. Didn't quite see. Was too busy focusing on the pill. Good tackle by Brand. Puts him in the dirt. The man's going to be turned. Going to need an extra stomach. He's got that much of a cow. He's been eating grass for another week. Throwing the ball. It wasn't throwing the ball. Come on. Never had pride. Wait, well, never really need prof throwing the ball, I guess. But either way, turn back over to Isaac Smith, who finds Langford on the nips in a congested area of the ground. And they're going to go forward once again. That's a good kick. Great kick. Finds Gunston. Handballs it. Gets it turned over. And away Melbourne go. They've got extra players running, but they're foiled by the siren. So three quarter time, Hawthorne have a healthy 25 point lead. This is this is looking dire for Melbourne right now. There's the bounce. Gorn wins the tap. He's back on the deck. Hands by Jones going forward. Forward. It's, just, it's, it's tunnel ball. It's devolved in tunnel ball. Jones picked up for a second and immediately got drilled. That's why they play tunnel ball. And the cheap kick to Isaac Smith. They probably went about nine and a half meters out of the 15 required. But, but Isaac Smith took the mark and found him Pete, who finds Titchell and Hawthorne looking forward to going forward and scoring once again. Because Jack Gunston does not make many mistakes. I say as he immediately turns it over. No, he doesn't. Timmy O can score from here. Doesn't want to though. He's like, you know what? I've got enough goals for one day. So people are McAvoy. How about you have something instead? Oh, I play you into the game because you haven't got many goals yet and I've got a bag full but the ball's been spoiled and it's going to be a stoppage in the forward half. Bruce has it 40 meters out, slight angle, doesn't want it, chips it over the top to Gunston and Gunston takes down an easy chest mark in front. This should be the sealer. Hard to imagine Melbourne coming back from that. There is the proverbial nail in the coffin as Dennis Committee would probably say if I actually listen to the in-game commentary but I refuse to because that's awful but there it is 31 point margin, 5 goal and a bit and a valuable point lead it's, it, it seems like it's too much of a hill too much of an ask for Melbourne to come back from this that's a big bump by Burgoyne Lay Jones out into next week and Hoppy somehow took the mark from the back he's four foot tall but took a contested mark how does that happen unless he sits on someone's shoulders he ain't gonna be doing that 450 stoppage for Hawthorne Gorn's gonna win it does win it gets it down but Timmy O read it best and it's gonna be another stoppage directly in front 30 meters out from the Hawthorne goal Gorn with the big tap goes goes to Melbourne boy but he doesn't get clean possession throwing the ball against Nate Jones. Oh, and then Bergman passes it off. Why would you ever pass it off? I don't know. But it's going on the ground. And Bruce somehow stopped the ball. It was heading for the post. But he used his force powers and stopped the dead in its track so it would sit up nicely so he could pummel it through into the fence for another sausage. Hawthorne by 37. That's got to be the game. It's got to be the game, surely. Titchell to ice it. Titchell to ice it. Titchell to ice it. No, it doesn't matter. Never mind. I got hands to it. Should have known. I was expecting to ship it through, but it never happens like that in this game. And no one's going to bring it away. There's still play. And they still have hope, but I think it's gone. Oh, Timmy O gets an easy one. Gunston got the interception. The ham off Timmy O running the boundary line, running the point line even. And now Hawthorne lead by 43 points. That's got to be it. I mean, it, 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 it is it. It's game over. There's 10 minutes left in the corner. There is no way you're going to kick 10 goals in that amount of time. It's just not going to happen. But Petrarca says, you know what? Shut up, Josh. You've got to hit the spiral from 80 meters out around the body because apparently that, that you can do that. People in this game are just superhuman when it comes to kicking goals. 
goals, but he did unfortunately miss, which reneges Hawthorne's valuable one point. But it still leaves them 42 points down, and this, this is not going to happen. Not with good kicking, uncontested footy, the Hawthorne game plan up the wing to Popolo. Bruce is taking on his shoulders. He's gone the spiral from 50. It looks wide. It is wide. That's a behind. Restores the valuable point. I mean, well, it's not super valuable now, I guess. But the valuable point, nonetheless, uh, lead to Hawthorne. Oh, he's always done. He's done it again. Those play-ons out of the goal square always make me nervous. Jordan Lewis. Oh, I wonder how he'd feel playing against his old team. I feel like he hates Hawthorne a bit now. He feels he got shafted. I mean, they traded him to a premiership contending side. So you can't be too mad, I suppose. But Vine is going to bring it forward. There's only five minutes left. It's over. It's over. Just put, just, just stop. I mean, well, you can't really stop. It's the last game of the season for them. So they're going to keep playing. But Hawthorne just need to slow this down and not turn the ball over anymore. Petrarca has kicked a goal, a consolation goal, but a goal all the same. It's his first of the night. That's unlucky for him. He's played well, deserved more than that. Gorn's still in there tearing up the ruck contest. If I mean, if Titchell didn't play one of the best seasons ever, then he'd probably be a Brownlow. But the Brownlow medal is soon to be. Titchell is the speak of the devil. There he is, racking up more leather poisoning as he always does. And Hawthorne go again to, to renege on Petrarca as uh, his consolation goal. But it doesn't matter now because Hawthorne have won. Their final siren has gone and it was turning into a very, very, very close game. Suddenly Melbourne just stopping out a score into a true Melbourne fashion. And they have been run over the top of by the Hawthorne Hawks. That's a big margin in the end. That's a big margin that shouldn't have happened. You can't, you, you can't be with them so close for so long. I mean, look, just after half time, they kicked two goals to a Hawthorne seven. Like, I mean, what, what are you doing out there? What are you doing? You've got to do better than that. So with that, with the incredibly accurate, it's never ever is, uh, predictions of AFL Evolution, that means that Hawthorne will progress to the, uh, wait, what happens after that? Is it the, oh, that's right. It's the uh, preliminary final against West Coast, I think it is. I'm trying to remember what the layout of the final is. I'm pretty sure it's West Coast. So they will go over to Perth to play at the brand new Optus Stadium, I think, if I'm remembering things correctly. But Melbourne, unfortunately, the dream run has ended. This probably won't happen. I reckon in, I reckon on Friday night, I reckon Melbourne will get up and steamroll the Hawthorne Hawks. As much as it hurts me to say that, I reckon that's what's going to happen. And Melbourne going to run away. Heavy, heavy victors. And I mean, this scoreline might actually get reversed. Because I think Melbourne are just too good inside for what Hawthorne can put up. But that will have to happen on the Friday. And I'll have to see what's going to happen in the preliminary finals. Because this episode is done. So thank you guys for watching most of all. Thank you to all the patrons on Patreon who made this episode possible. If you like, make sure the like button down below and subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter. But I'll talk to you there first. I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.